How's it going everyone? Andrew Robinson back here at it with another Max MSP tutorial. In this video, we are going to talk about the object swatch, which is a super useful object uh, and one I said I would make a tutorial on. I think it's now finally time uh, because swatch is actually incredibly useful for a lot of different reasons. So let's just jump right into it, shall we? First thing we're going to do, create a new object, type the word swatch into it, and you'll see it says uh, choose a color. And then uh, once we create the swatch object, it turns into this graphical interface object. Um, which in Max means we can lock the patch and click on it and interface with it like we can with a lot of other objects in Max MSP. If we unlock our patch again, press M to create a message, patch the left outlet into the right inlet of the message box, and then do the same thing, lock the patch, drag the circle icon around, we'll see we get this list of variables uh, or floating numbers that is essentially the color we have selected. So we can um, do this, we can use this to assign color to anything in Max MSP. And it's super useful for that reason because you don't have to know what the RGB value is for that specific color. You can just pick a color you like and it's gonna output the RGB value for you. So we can change the color of things, like a panel object, which is basically just like an, uh, a colored background area. Um, and it's I, I use panels to make things look fancy in the end. Um, but for now, we're just going to use the message uh, prepend we're going to use the object prepend with a message bg color and if we pitch that into our panel and our swatch into that it's going to send the message bg color to this panel with whatever color we select which means we can just click and select and drag and change the color of this panel in this way which is super useful you know you're trying to create dynamic color changes that's a really great way to do that um and by default swatch just outputs floating numbers, which is probably what you're going to use for color more than anything else. But, uh, you know, in case you need whole number integer values, you can uh, go into the attribute setting of the swatch, which I just created this adder UI object. You press A on the keyboard to do that, um, or you can create a new object called adder UI. That's the name for it. it. Does the same thing. Then once you patch that into your swatch object, you can lock the patch, click where it says nothing, and we can go and scroll down to something like output old style zero to two fifty five values, and it comes up as the message compatibility. Which if we just check this and then drag around, you'll notice we uh, now are getting whole integer values to determine that color. Now the reason this panel is not working anymore is because the panel expects floating numbers. So it's expecting numbers between zero and one to be its color. Uh, and because we're sending numbers over the size of one, uh, it's just reading that as that max one value and thus pretty much being entirely white. Unless you find somewhere where there's like a zero in the list and then it's just gonna be a zero. Um, and yeah, for, for that reason, I generally tend to not turn compatibility one on, uh, cause like I just said, you know, most of the stuff you're going to assign to be a new color in max is going to look for those floating number value versions, um, which is cool. Uh, if you ever run into a situation where you kind of have whole integer numbers, but you need those, uh, floating point numbers for whatever reason, you can actually use scale the scale object on a list. Uh, and so if we say scale from zero to 255, which is the range of color values we get when we're using the whole integers, and we wanna scale it down to be between zero and one, we can do that. And then all we gotta do is patch this in between the swatch and our prepend object. And then this list of values that is now between zero and 255, because the compatibility for this one is turned on, is being scaled down to this uh, same value of uh, floating numbers. And if we just, you know, attach a massive box into that and do the same thing, lock and drag, we can see, yeah, it's working. This We're getting the scale of floating numbers, the correct color, uh, that's the integer, that's the floating number value, whichever, I, again, I'm just repeating, but whichever makes the most sense for you in your specific instance of your max patch, just go with that version. Um, yeah, 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 so. That's cool. That's cool. But uh, assigning colors to swatch, uh, you don't have to click and drag. We have these inlets at the top. You see the left inlet says RGB list. Uh, the second is green and blue is the last. So you can think of each of these inlets as, you know, your individual RGB color value. We're going to create another swatch here. 
and we're just going to create some uh, floating number boxes, patch that in, 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 and in, just like that. So now as we uh, increase this, we're increasing the value in our red channel. So this is the blue channel, and this is the green, or sorry, this is the blue channel, the middle is the green channel. Um, and so you can also get specific colors that you want in this way. It's totally up to you um, in your specific situation if you need to do it this way versus like, you know, this way. Um, but both options are available. And also as like this uh, floating number in each individual inlet, uh, that's not the only setup that Swatch allows you to do. You can uh, have this and it could, you could format everything to actually just be a list. So if we create a pack object and say uh, FFF, actually I'm going to do the other pack object, the one without the C, P, A, K. So all of these are hot inlets and changing any one of these values is going to change the entire list and have it output its, uh, its list to the swatch. And so it's the same thing. We can send everything in as a list or into each individual uh, inlet. It doesn't really matter. Again, whichever makes most sense for what you're trying to do in the moment. But these are all options that are available to us. Um, so real quick, I'm just going to clean this stuff up, give us give ourselves some more room to work with in here. All right, and now that we've got some space, the main thing, the main thing that I think makes Swatch extra cool and extra useful, more than just what we've uh, shown in its basic setup, is that we can also use the HSL method of determining color. So what is HSL? We are familiar with RGB. That's pretty standard for computers. You know, you put a floating value in the red channel, the green channel, and the blue channel, and the combination gets you that mix. HSL is very similar, except you're not working in a red, green, and blue channel. HSL stands for hue, saturation, and luminance. So the first variable of the list will determine the hue, the second, the saturation, and the third, the luminance. And it's actually really cool. Um, if we create another swatch object down here, and we do the HSL message, which is just literally HSL, and we assign some variables. I'm just going to make the first one uh, a variable. So that's going to be our hue. We're going to set the saturation to the full value, which is one, and we're gonna set the luminance to half, which is 0.5. If we patch that into the swatch right here, and we patch a float, floating message number box into this message, now when I change this value, we are changing this variable he here, which I said is hue, and you'll see as I am going up, uh, closer to one, we are going across uh, the middle of the swatch object, uh, which is really amazing. And it's still, when you do this, it's still going to output the list from the swatch as RGB, as everything else in Max MSP is looking for RGB uh, values to determine color, but it's really cool that we can send the hue, saturation, luminance message into the swatch object and get an RGB list out. And what makes this really useful, in my opinion, is if you look at this, we're only sending one floating number message to this message box to change the color. It only needs one floating value right now. I mean, we have predefined these, um, but if you know, if you want like full saturation and, and this like middle of the way luminance where it's like going to give you essentially the saturated color or like the brightest color version of that color, um, it's really useful because we only have to change this one number box rather than send three numbers like we have to do with the RGB message. So that can be really useful for a lot of different reasons. Um, the main one being, uh, yeah, you just, you only need one, one variable to change things. So we can do something like a dial object which uh, is this another graphical object where you can lock a patch, click on it and increase it or decrease it. It's like, you know, you're turning a dial and this outputs numbers between zero and 127. Um, so if we do the same thing where we patch in the message box, click and drag, we could see, yep, we're getting that output range between zero and 127. 
So same thing, we can use a scale object uh, or just divide by 127, but we're gonna use scale, we're gonna say zero, 127, scale it down to zero and one, uh, patch that into that. And the scale can go in this flow number box over here. And now as we change this dial, we are changing the color, which is really cool. And we can now patch this maybe back into this dial and change the color of the dial. I think it's outline color. No, it's not outline color. Uh, I think needle color, indicator color. Yeah, indicator color changes to uh, needle color, but then we can just take this list from our swatch, patch that into this adder UI, and now as we change this dial, we are going to change the color of the of the dial as we change the dial, which is pretty cool. We've just made this sweet uh, rainbow dial, which again, if you're like, you know, into creating really fancy looking uh, interfaces uh, that are fancy, <laughs> this is a really neat trick to do something. I love this rainbow dial. Um, but again, you know, like I said, we can change the color of anything in Max MSP uh, with this swatch object as long as we, you know, use the right uh, messages and objects. There's this object called BG Color, which literally lets you set the background color of the entire max patch. So let's just take our number, our list from our swatch, patch that in there, and turn the dial, and now we are changing the background color of the entire max patch, which is pretty cool. Um, and you can, again, you know, create really crazy, fancy user interfaces this way. Um, there's, there's a lot of possibilities uh, that become open to you uh, with this because it's just so easy and uh, fast to change the color uh, in a very dynamic way. Super useful. Um, and that's pretty much it. Like really that's the secret of Swatch. It's so useful because you can uh, manually select a color, but you can also, you can also change the input from RGB to HSL, which is also super useful. In case you're wondering also, uh, just what the other messages of the HSL do, I'm just gonna copy this over, change all of these two variables real fast. Dollar sign two, dollar sign three, so we get a list and get rid of that. We're gonna copy this pack from up here and copy and paste it down there and bam. So again, um, we know Saturation is, uh, if we set saturation to one, it's gonna give us our brightest color. Our luminance, you can think of as like the Y value on this swatch. The higher this number is, the closer to white we're gonna be. Uh, the lower the number is, the closer to black we're going to be. And then again, the hue is just uh, your X direction on the axis. So anywhere across here, um, and we could patch that into something like this so we can actually see the color we're selecting really well. Um, yeah, so here we're, we're moving across, uh, luminance, we're moving up and down, and then saturation is literally the saturation of the color. So you can make it more or less saturated um, until you find the exact right color you want. And then again, you know, it's outputting an RGB list. So if we patch this in the message box, even though we've sent this uh, as the HSL message, we are getting an RGB out. So this is this message box is the RGB color for this color, which is super useful. And again, as I as I said, any anything you want to change the color of in Max MSP, Swatch is a great way to just get very specific colors and mess around with that. So um, that's kind of it. I hope you found this tutorial useful. I hope uh, that showing you uh, the secrets of the swatch uh open your eyes to some of the possibilities that can be done again like the main thing for me that i find to be extremely useful about swatch is this hsl method and where if you have like you know the saturation and the luminance predefined to what you want um you only need to send one variable value to get a whole range of colors which is so much more convenient than doing things with rgb um and I think HSL just intuitively also makes a lot more sense because uh, we're used to thinking about colors in terms of like saturation and luminance and not so much about like what the value of the green channel is or the blue channel is. Um, <laughs> so that's so that's like super useful for that reason. Um, 
And yeah, if there are any questions uh, lingering on anything that I talked about, please feel free to leave that in the comments down below. Uh, if you found this video to be useful, uh, please remember to like and subscribe because that's how I know you found it useful. Um, and on that note, I will see you guys in the next tutorial.